My framing, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, etc. mostly got done in chunks, but there is definitely a lot of other stuff that happened. So I'm gonna try to do a little voiceover work with some of what I consider the more obscure things that I ran into while tackling all the mechanicals. One of the earliest things I did was build a new standoff for the electrical meter. I had to get my service remastered to extend past the new roof, and that gave me the opportunity to make everything look pretty with a matching white trim plate behind the meter. A lot of the time you could just use a single piece of trim here, but as I had already gotten the panel and meter replaced before the fire, I had to match the previous siding thickness. There was vinyl over foam over stucco, which added up to be fairly thick, and this is the best way I could think of to do that. Something that saved me a little bit was having everything laid out on drawings I could easily understand. This is more important for things like kitchens, where you're constrained by cabinet height, spacing, appliances, etc., but also becomes important for things like bedrooms if you want to plan specific spacing for bedside table outlets. And here's one example of getting to it as I go got me in a little bit of trouble. I hadn't fully detailed out all the framing yet, so instead of continuing to run electrical for the day, I stopped for about 45 minutes to remove four studs, replace one, and improve the insulation in the area. That also meant pulling nails from the outside, which meant cutting and retaping the house wrap. I have with me my PS Knight electrical book, and I referred to it frequently. A lot of people hear the words homeowner or DIY and think, hack work that sucks. And a lot of time that's fair, and totally true. The easiest way around that, and how I've rebuilt this house passing all my inspections, is to be okay with saying, I don't know a thing, I'll definitely get an answer instead of just figuring it out. When my book fails me, I can turn to the internet, or in my city, I can call and talk to an inspector and ask specific questions, which they call a code inquiry. There's no charge for these, so I definitely made liberal use of them whenever I got stuck. I got a lot of questions about P-loops or service loops. Code requires them here. Your area might not. Their intended use is twofold. First, electricians hate drywallers and expect them to mangle any and all cables left coiled in a box using their roto zips. So having a little extra to pull after drywall makes sense. Secondly, over time outlets and switches may get changed and it can be good to have it a little extra in case whoever did a change decided to just cut off any old length. A little bit about staples here. I tried thin pin staples, I tried plastic joined, double nail staples, I tried stapler fed staples, and in the end, for me, it just ended up being a matter of get good, son, with the basic steel chonkers. They start out harder to use, they look ugly, but they're cheap, and if you run anything bigger than 12.3, you're gonna need to step up to S3s or S4s, so you might as well have practice with the 1s and 2s. I am kind of interested in the racketeer cable chases that would have saved me a lot of time in the attic, and I spent a lot of time in the attic. I hope in the next house to be able to invest in some of the drywall stills to save a lot of attic crawling and ladder climbing. Let's talk lasers real quick. Use them. Not just for placing boxes, but also for drilling holes to run cables, for lining up ceiling pans. And this little centering jig saved me time on both plumbing and wiring. Two pieces of 1x2 connected at 90 degrees with one cut just long enough to land dead in the center of a 2x4. Then I could just place it right below the laser line, trace around a corner, giving me perfect height and stud depth. If you don't want to invest in augers, which you should think about if you're doing a whole house, they are amazing! Like I didn't at the time, then my best suggestion for drilling a 2x4 is the Bosch Daredevil spade bits. They have a threaded bit on the end that actually, not just claims to, but actually pulls the bit through as you drill. You don't need to push until it breaks out the end. Also, use an impact driver instead of a drill to save your wrists. Something you should run into are the rules about box fill. Simply put, different electrical boxes have different amounts of space inside and code details how many conductors are allowed based on the available space. This becomes more of an issue when you start dealing with things like three and four way switches as they require more conductors, or if you're using a box to double as a junction as well as a switch. A lot of people will look at the new ultra thin or pancake LEDs, see that they come with the IC rated gasket and think, hey, that's good enough for my attic. Let's just plan to leave a cable and find it after drilling a hole in the drywall later. While this might technically pass in your area, Using rough-in plates combined with appropriate vapor barrier will let you exactly define where the cutouts will go 
And anytime in the future you want to either switch a light color or even the whole fixture, you don't end up with a face full of blown in insulation. Sometimes I was too lazy to go and find a fish tape and too cheap to buy one as well. So for me, a ground or any other scrap wire can be used for quick fishing in awkward areas. Concrete filled double rim joists are so fun. For areas where you need to run more than two cables, you can find these snapshot multi-cable staples. Snapshot multi-cable staples. Say that five times fast. They're normally a little easier than this to install. That stud was old growth fur, and that material gave all of my tools a lot of grief. Here we go. I made the effort here to add framing to properly position the outlet for the right side of my master vanity. Unfortunately, as you can see from these pictures, I didn't do that for all of my switches. Mild regrets there, but I still ended up with full plates everywhere. This is definitely one of those things I didn't see mentioned anywhere in the YouTubeosphere. From then on, it was just a lot of the same. Run cables, install boxes, rinse and repeat. I hope that some of these points help with whatever project you're working on. Now go get back to work.